Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I'm enjoying my coffee. It is a cold, foggy morning in California. Hey, we're gonna talk about Coinbase today. Uh, we're gonna talk about the importance, and stick with me because I might go off on a tangent because I'm gonna explain some things about Coinbase that I don't like. Uh, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know my disdain for Coinbase uh, for so many different reasons. I'm gonna give you guys those reasons today, but why it's so darn important you know, regardless what exchange you use, right? Coinbase got a lot of good things with it, don't get me wrong. But there's also some things that I just don't really care for, you know, that I haven't experienced with other exchanges. Uh, you know, I've got a Coinbase account, I've got a Gemini account, really like Gemini, but they don't have as many coins as Coinbase, all right? Um, but this is coming on the heels, this video, of them just getting completely slammed with uh, the news story that hackers drained a ton of accounts and their customer service is just deplorable. You know, there's a lot of people that are freaking out. They lost money. Uh, they want to know where it is, if they're getting it back. And they're, they're just getting completely slammed. There's a story on uh, CNBC, uh, probably we'll see if the editor can uh, put up, my awesome editor, by the way, <laughs> can put up the, uh, the headlines from CNBC about Coinbase. And uh, the reason why it's so important for you to learn how to custody your own coins, okay? Now you guys know that I use uh, Ledger devices, I use Trezor devices. Uh, I really like the Trezor, quite frankly. And just you know, first off, none of this is financial um, advice. I'm not a financial professional. Let's see if there's a disclaimer somewhere <laughs> near here. Uh, I am not a financial professional. I'm just explaining you know, my experiences with cryptocurrency and storage and things like that. But it's so important that you learn, take the time to learn how to buy a hardware wallet or get your stuff into cold storage. Um, own your private keys. There's public keys that uh, anybody can see. It's just like a, a checking account number. And then there's your private keys, which is similar to your uh, login and password that you use when you're getting onto your, your normal bank account. You need to be able to hold your private keys. You have ownership. There's no third party that someone can hack, you know, and then there's all kinds of other security protocols. I've done videos about that, you know, the importance of uh, uh, protecting your phone from SIM swaps, all that good stuff. So I've got a link to the Trezor below and probably in the description, um, in the description and, and probably in the uh, comment section because I really do like the new uh, Trezor. I like them both, but the new one with the touch screen where you have to actually, when you're making a decision, you have to hold it. It needs human touch to actually, you know, for a certain amount of seconds, make sure you know what you're doing. So let's get back to Coinbase. So customer service is horrible. People are freaking out. Um, there's, been time, there's been times, it's just really weird when all of a sudden, you know, something is smoking up in price and you want to go sell your cryptocurrency, there's a network outage. You know, Coinbase has been famous for this. Now, there have been other uh, 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 exchanges worldwide that have experienced uh, similar things, but Coinbase seems to almost happen regularly. Between them and Robinhood, you can almost uh, set your watch to it. And I'm sure a few of you guys right now are cracking up because you know exactly what I'm talking about. But let me tell you a couple of things that have just recently happened. We'll, hear, we'll start with something a while ago and then something that happened just recently with Coinbase. Same situation. When Bitcoin, forked to uh, Bitcoin Cash. There was a really interesting scenario that happened when um, all of a sudden Coinbase said there was a day, a specific day when a fork happens. They said, okay, at this exact time, if you own one Bitcoin, you're gonna now own one Bitcoin. Plus you'll have your other wallet, your Bitcoin Cash, and one Bitcoin Cash will pop into there. Makes it completely fair. That's what the blockchain's all about, right? True decentralized blockchain. When people disagree and they wanna fork the code into something new and make it better, well, they've got to make it fair as well. So for everyone that owned a Bitcoin that day, they got one Bitcoin cash. Now, something that's really interesting about that is that Coinbase decided, hmm, you know, because there was always doubts that Coinbase had all the Bitcoin. Now this is proof. Think about this. Hmm, you know what? We don't think that Bitcoin cash is real safe. So you know what, for your protection, we're not gonna give it to you. Yeah, because that's us, we care. We're Coinbase. That's, hopefully he put in the little Coinbase logo right there. Hmm, Coinbase, we protect you. So you know what? We're gonna keep you away from the big bad Bitcoin cash. And it went on forever. People were freaking out going, we want our cash. We want our Bitcoin cash. Now some people, like yours truly, had their Bitcoin sitting on a treasure device. And they had their Bitcoin cash wallet there. And instantaneously, on that exact moment, I went on to my treasure. I looked at, I fired up the software and it said, the little message right there. Do you want to open up your big, or I don't remember the exact wordage, but it was pretty much, do you want to activate your Bitcoin cash wallet now that the forks happen? Yes, I do. Click and then boom. 
assume it was right there, but not for the people on Coinbase. So it almost uh, makes you think, did they even have all the Bitcoin? Hmm, weird. Well, let's talk about something else. About six, uh, no, let's say 10 months ago, you owned XRP and you're super pumped and you're just uh, crushing it. And I don't remember the prices, I don't have the chart right here, but uh, but it started going up, right? And, uh, and then all of a sudden, this SEC lawsuit comes in and then it started going down. That made us sad. But some of us didn't sell because we know the bigger picture. And so my point being is that uh, people on Coinbase, all of a sudden one day, and I want to say it was Christmas Day. I almost want to say someone woke up on Christmas Day and went, hmm, this is a good time to wake up and do a press conference. Or not a press conference, but a, a press uh, release. And say, you know what? As of this date, we are suspending trading. Well, guess what suspending trading on Coinbase means? We're also going to keep your crypto. We're not going to let you take it off, right? Now, where's the freedom in that, if you think about it? Where is the freedom in... Uh, you own something, it's supposed to be yours, but all of a sudden, nah, we know better. We're just gonna hold on to it for you. We're not even gonna let you you know, sell it. We're not gonna let you, or maybe I think they did let them sell it, but we're not gonna let you pull it off the exchange. And I think I have a feeling it's still that way, but what's really interesting about that is uh, someone like myself or other people I knew, they had theirs on their Trezor device. They can do whatever they want. Now, what's really sad about this whole thing that whoever had their XRP, uh, XRP ended up making a, a, an epic run. Very similar, actually. Actually, it wasn't as bad as the Bitcoin Cash. You see, when Bitcoin Cash hit the market, it exploded in value. And all the people on Coinbase, they couldn't sell it. Why? Because they didn't have it. It wasn't on their exchange. And I want to say it went up like 400%. And that whole time, people are just like freaking out going, I want to sell it, I want to sell it. And then the price crashed. And it's really sad. The same thing happened to XRP when the XRP had that run from, I, I wanna say 80 cents to $1.61 or something like that. People on Coinbase were stuck. And I think that really speaks volumes to why you need to learn how to self-custody your cryptocurrency. All right, I wanna give you guys the pros and the cons. The pros, there is a pro of Coinbase, super easy. Hook up your credit card, your debit card, boom, you have crypto literally within a half an hour. But ironically, even when you wire funds into Coinbase, and you put it, here's cash, wire, it's in, sweet. You buy your Bitcoin, okay, I wanna pull it off my Trezor? Uh, yeah, no. You know, we're gonna hold it for 72 hours just to make sure it's safe. But on Gemini, I could sit there, wire funds, and then literally the second it goes, bing, money's in your account, and just so you know, it happens in like hours, like three or four hours, as opposed to Coinbase's six or eight hours. I don't know why that is either. I literally sent two wires the exact same time within like a half an hour of each other, because it took that long to do the documents. Coinbase and Gemini, literally half the time in Gemini. Second I bought it, I could take it off, put it on my Trezor. Coinbase, yeah, 72 hours. That was it. I was completely done with them. So I want to give you, bring you guys the pros and cons. Pros, super easy. The onboarding process is fast. And you've probably, for all accounts and purposes, owned a derivative for a few days of whatever you bought. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please throw out a like, uh, share the videos, things like that. People need, as they're getting into cryptocurrency, need to learn the pros and the cons, okay? I'm not a financial adv uh, advisor. I'm not a financial professional. You know, I'm just a guy that bought cryptos. I got a brohawk and a dream. I keep hearing something. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much. The Economic Ninja is out.